It's an exciting day today. Oh, I did do a little thing this morning, I forgot to tell you. Oh, did you? Yeah. No, I seen and then I did say, and Lawrence will be here later to make it more fun. So here he is. <laughs> He's going to make it more fun. It makes fun. me wonder. Good morning guys, it's early, which is why it's just me today, um, but work is underway on the RV pads, so I'm going to try and video as much of it as I can and go through it and explain everything that's happening. Um, I'm sure Lawrence will come on here later and make it way more fun, um, but for now, exciting! Okay, I'm here now, and this is an exciting day. It is. So this is the start of our new RV camp. <laughs> camp is a bit much. We're only doing a couple of pads. Okay, so it's not a camp. There's space for two RVs. But instead of actually, we were gonna do a lot here. There was a whole bunch of decisions we had to make and we were gonna extend our normal driveway next to our house and put it out, but we would have to knock down a retaining wall and take out a whole bunch of pine trees and we're trying to limit how many trees we remove. And although this does look like it's straight through the middle of a forest, this is just to the side of our of our house. There wasn't actually that many trees along here, which was cool. Yeah, that's nice. So, um, so we actually only removed three trees, I believe. Obviously, we didn't. We're too lazy for that. <laughs> We're done with that. Farm life is back there. We don't have to do that. Um, so, um, this has always been in the plan. This is why we bought this property because we had a lot of space at the back of our property, which is wooded, and we have started to build uh, RV pads up here. So, I'm going to be honest. It's quite a distance from the road here. Here's our house here. Yes, we're going to paint it at some point. <laughs> and here is where the pads are. So let's take a walk up here and we'll show you what it's like at the end. We have some big decisions. We do. We have some big decisions and I'm going to video this so you can record what our conversations are like. So, this is the end. This is where we just walked up. We have, we're going to have one pad here. Which what goes is this? Out there. I have no idea what that is. Sorry. Uh, and then we're going to have another pad here. So this one's nice and easy. It's pretty much a straight run all the way up into here. Now this one's a bit more difficult because we look over here hopefully you'll be able to see this but this tree we didn't want to take this tree out because it's a really cool looking tree uh, and it's a big tree um, so we would have to bend around into here now it's probably doable but opposite that tree there are these little trees where you kind of want to swing the front of the truck out so I'm not sure whether that's going to work or whether we should be taking these trees out as well. Really don't want to though. So I spoke to the guys doing it, really cool, really cool people. And I said, hey, when you get this ready before we start putting gravel down, I'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, I want to bring the RV up and uh, once it's all, the sand is all packed down, I want to bring the RV up and see if I can get it in here easily or not, or whether we need to do some more work. Find anything interesting, Natalie? I just realised they just dumped all of the actual branches back there, so I was like, oh. Yeah, they, uh, so we didn't pay for a clearance of taking the stuff away. They took away some of it earlier, but uh, we said they can just leave it around here and actually it creates quite, some quite nice barriers. Yeah. As you can see along the side, it creates a little barrier of where the edge is gonna be. So that's the first decision is that tree. Yeah. The other decision I made, an executive decision without you, okay. is this wasn't this far back. It was much further forward, but I wanted it further back. So they've uh, scooted everything up it to that tree so we don't have to take that tree out. Okay. So he took a bunch of little cluster of trees out there, just little ones. Um, and the same over here. He took a cluster of trees out over there. And I think we're actually going to have to pay more for the gravel um, towards the back, just so we can push this all the way back which would be nice. And then our neighbor's house is here. Um, and so we're gonna try and get some more shrubs and things and plant that in there so that if there is an RV here, whether it be ours or someone visiting, we can, they're shielded from that. And so that would be nice. 
So we're so, also talking about how to then get to our house. Yes. So if we do have guests and we or we want to run out to the RV, we don't have to run all the way down the road and back up into this new driveway. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're talking about whether we have a path going directly to the house or not, and if it's going to go like that's the house just through the trees there, whether it's going to go straight through there or whether we should go around the side or whether we should have a gate, or we do just have it going all the way round. Round. I just think it's a pain if we're like loading all the food and stuff i guess we could drive it round. well i think if we did that we'd get the <laughs> rv take it around and bring it up and actually uh, our plan is that's a good idea. our other plan is that we we're talking about is having like two of everything apart from clothes yes true right. so we can just so get up and go clothes and food we won't have but everything in the rv we'll just have two of everything which will take a while to build up because i'm gonna buy two coffee machines and things like that so we also need to think about security yes i have some ideas some of them I might talk about on the channel and others I might not. Ooh, um, right. But yeah, it's going to be a secret. It's gonna be a secret. <laughs> well, if I tell everyone our security measures, then it's they not They can security. disable them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, or work around it. So, I am going to have cameras out here. Uh, I know what I want, and we're going to put an access point out here as well. So, if people do stay, they will have gigabit internet. So, we're nowhere near water and power and septic and all that yeah this is literally just phase one yeah but i'm very excited it's, it happened so fast but it's yeah. great we actually found it very difficult to find a company who would do the water electric yeah run the ethernet and do the groundwork so that's been tough so we've yeah. had to go for different companies so we've decided to do it in stages so the first stage will be to get this done actually i want to talk about that about the uh we had a we had a quote for concrete oh which yeah. was good so take a guess on how much it would cost for concrete on here write it in the comments while i'm telling you about what we're actually doing and then i'll tell you how much it is so we've gone for gravel i can tell you it's based on price so we are it is going to be gravel so we're getting a they're going to dig out all of this sand they're going to put base they're going to compact all the sand down they're going to put a base rock down and then the gravel on top um the guy said it, it, that's what he's done at his house uh, and i trust what he was saying um and so that's going to be um pretty good the other good thing about gravel is it means that if anyth anyone does drive up here or tries to take steal our trailer the gravel's loud if anyone's walking up here the gravel's going to be loud you'll hear them walking so that's a good security measure damn it i wasn't going to tell anyone our security measure <laughs> anyway i think that's an obvious one yeah so um, so that's what we're going to do, gravel all the way up and here. We were considering putting concrete just on the pads, so you had concrete pads and concrete just coming in, so that the, there's a bit of a, 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 an incline as you come up, and I'm worried about the gravel eventually just dragging all the way down, but we might do that at another time. But anyway, here is the price. Natalie, how much was it for about, what's this, 100 feet? I think it's more than that. Maybe a bit more than 100 feet of driveway concrete it's forty two thousand dollars forty two thousand dollars no. was that including the uh, them actually preparing it or was that just for the concrete? no i think that was just for the concrete. just for the concrete so uh we got a quote for this this was around about nine thousand i think yes. for all of this to clear all of this take down a bunch of trees and, and put the do gravel the down. gravel <laughs> yeah and put the pads down so anyway this is day one. This is what they've done on day one. I'm very impressed. I'm happy about many things. One is that they did it so quickly. Two, that they've left trees either side. Three, that they left enough here to hide us from our neighbors. Um, and four, that they did the extra bit uh, going back because I underestimated how, how long I wanted it. So. It's like a moment of truth. It is. Um, it's early. <laughs> it's not that early. It's early for me. <laughs> Uh, they've done the base level of the gravel, the new stuff has just been delivered, uh, but I was concerned about the slope at the start of the driveway. Uh, the guy assured me it was going to be fine, I think he's wrong, <laughs> if I'm honest. So I said, well how about I just hook up and then we go and make sure that I can back it in. Um, I mean he seems to know what he's doing, so I think I'm going to be proven wrong, but my only concern is he deals with like, you know, equipment trailers and things, whereas uh, travel trailers have a bit more of a hangover at the back. Yeah. Um, oh, because I can probably. <laughs> um, uh, so I'm worried about that. I think the back of the rig is going to scratch on the slope before it starts going up it. So we're going to hook up. Well, I have just hooked up, and now we're going to go test it. Yay! So how low it is here.
Well. So this is a slope, um, doesn't really look like much, but just as the wheels get into there, we obviously have to leave, uh, I can't remember what you call it, what do you call it, where like the water runs down, the, yeah, yeah, where the channel comes down so the water can, can roll down here. As the wheels hit that, the back would hit here. So this is fine for us. We can get this uh, no problem for our trailer right now. The other thing he did mention, which is a good tip, is if you have any gravel like this, he said just spread some uh, like sacrete or concrete powder over it and then just water it down. It really helps kind of stick it all together. So I think he said he put about six bags here. Um, the reason why we've only done it here, I may do it in other places if we find it becomes an issue, but the reason why he's done it here is obviously because when you're pushing the rig up, this is where the wheels are really gonna spin. So this will really help to to, uh, to keep this compact and also it'll stop any water if we have any really heavy, you know, we're coming up to hurricane season soon so the rains are going to be pretty bad, it will just stop it from washing away. So uh, really good tip there. So here it is, it is all finished. Uh, it's not perfectly level but it does allow the water to run off so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, interesting fact, we had a choice of the gravel that we could use. Um, I can't remember, I keep calling it Heinz 57, <laughs> but it's not, but there's one 57 rock um, and then there was crushed concrete. Um, similar prices, we went for the crushed concrete, um, mainly because it's much whiter um, and it just looks nicer, I think. It does look nicer, you're right, yeah. It's got a nice little fleck to it. <laughs> yes, and it was a bit cheaper, I think, but not by, not by much, nothing that would make a, a huge amount of difference. An interesting fact, mm. this is crushed concrete from the pylons from the old power station. Oh. Which old power station? Don't know, one local. Oh, just local. Apparently. Okay. Yeah, apparently a local. Nothing famous power station, or anything so. then. <laughs> no, so this is. So I'm happy that we're uh, recycling something. <laughs> True. Um, which is cool, and it keeps a little bit of history around here from the power station. That's cool, isn't it? <laughs> okay, yeah. Don't you think it's cool? <laughs> Clearly not, Natalie. Uh, I think it's cool. So, anyway, we have one pad over here. Uh, and we have another pad over here. Obviously, I'm saying pads, they're not concrete pads. Too cheap for that <laughs> with the price. I'm not paying $47,000 for that. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, plenty of space here. Um, there's actually, there actually, we did extend it a bit further than we wanted to, um, just so that you can actually have uh, an RV and a car here. Um, or if we get a boat, Natalie. No, uh, stop it. Space <laughs> for the RV and a boat. So the next big thing is we couldn't find someone who would do the power, water, and the pads all together. Yeah. So the next thing that we need to figure out is how we get the power out here. Um, there is a problem with that is that the, uh, the cable at the moment is really expensive. Um, so uh, we were looking at getting 250 amp hookups. We're not sure whether we're gonna do that because the guy said you'd have to have two wires um, and it's quite a distance over to the house over here. So uh, he basically said it's double the price. Um, so what, what he did say, I think he said we can have 160 amp, right? Yes. So uh, there is a 60 amp, so we could either have 230 amp hookups. Or 150. Or 150, or we could have 250s as long as we don't pull too much from one. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, uh, so we could have our rig hit, hooked up with doing not much other than trickle charging the battery plus someone else here. So that's the decision we have to make and we have to price it up. The guy gave us a quick quote. He had a quick walk around before the pads were here, but we're just waiting for him. We're gonna call him to get him back to see what he thinks. Yep. Um, and then the water as well. I don't know how I'm gonna do the water yet. No. There is a, a hose over here, but I'm not sure I want a hose. I'd like to get the proper water pipe and do it properly. If we're gonna put the effort in, we may as well do it properly. So uh, we need to get quotes on that. So we're trying to find a decent plumber who might be able to help us out with that so anyway are you happy yeah excited looks really good it does look, look beautiful very happy we did do a test uh, to make sure they had to change the slope there's a bit of a slope coming up at the start there and um, so we had to do a test um, before they really pack down all of the the top layer so we have a base layer and then we have the top layer so after they did the base layer we did that I had to come in at a bit of an angle he fixed it a bit um, Still a little bit worrying. Yeah. Uh, you have to get it just at the right just angle. Just scraped. But the good thing is it's gravel, so it's not going to do too much damage to like the rigs. But it is annoying yeah. that it just scrapes. But we do have a 40-foot trailer, right? So 
hopefully if anyone's smaller than us it shouldn't be a problem yeah i think where we have like one of the longest travel trailers like, there are a few other longer models but where we have the travel trailer it's actually quite low compared to a lot of the other fifth wheels i know some of the class a's i was talking to michael from rvdm and his class a uh they can actually with the air suspension they can push the the, yeah, the rear up. up so yeah. he said that won't be a problem they were actually here yesterday having a look around um and so that won't be a problem so i am worried about some of the bigger fifth wheels yeah. that are quite low especially the toy haulers um but generally i think they're a lot higher the fifth wheels when we look at them they seem to be a lot higher so uh, I'm sure there is a formula. If anyone knows the formula between the height of the back of the rig and then the distance to the wheel hub, I'm sure there's some kind of formula that you can get the angle and figure it out. If anyone knows about that, please let me know if anyone wants to calculate that and let me know what that could be so that I can measure the, the height of the back of the rig and then the distance to the hub and I can see exactly what angle it should be. Yeah. Then I'll measure the angle here. There's got to be something. Someone's going to know. <laughs> but overall, we're very happy. Yes, um, stage one is complete. Stage one complete. We will keep you updated with uh, what we decide with the power and water. See you next week.